YouTube, it's Brian Phillips. Look at this thing. It's a 1.5 meter P47 by FMS. Take a second and just admire the delicious pilot. Look at that canopy and cockpit area. Absolutely gorgeous. Yes, we have scale nav lights. Yes, we have beautiful retracts with gear door to die for. Look at that, amazing. Very nice. And then of course, take off and landing flaps. As you guys are used to seeing, this thing comes equipped with reflex. We're running ours on an 82 or an 80, 80, 80 20T. Thank you, mm -hmm. camera crew. All right, good. Without further ado, beautiful sunset flight. Here we go. Compliments of the forest fires in Ca Canada. Mm -hmm. Okay, here we go. Getting hard into the throttle. Wow. Up in no time, guys. About 25, 30% throttle there. 6S, 5,000. Beautiful weather. Very calm. So guys, if you haven't seen this plane before, we would have done it earlier this year in the middle of winter. And I just long for days like this. We've got a beautiful sunset and gorgeous opportunity to fly. Let's go up by the front and we can do an inside pass. As you can see, everything is greening up. We've got absolutely gorgeous backdrop for these ultra low and controlled passes, depending heavily on the reflex to keep everything nice and tight. Toit like a toyga. A little bit of contrary rudder to keep the nose where I wanted it. We'll cut it pretty sharp here. Okay. Keep out of the neighbor's airspace. Okay, four landing flaps. I'll show you guys a dirty pass. I know you want to see it. Look at this duty. Dirty, 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 dirty. Gorgeous still I had to get a bunk bug or keep those gear out for just a minute all right time to collapse them beautiful silhouette oh my goodness it's gorgeous now just take off flaps out of the flaps all together then we're gonna go down the runway you prepared for this mm -hmm. give me high speed pass okay absolutely wonderful and the Nats are visiting tonight again yes they're back they're so helpful they really are. They don't make you appreciate minus 15 degrees. No. Oh, they don't. We need some bats. Where are our bats? We have a bat box. We do. We have bat a house. Okay. Well, any flaps, let's slow it down with a dirty, dirty, dirty pass. Oh, yeah! Take off flaps and out of the gear. A little bit of rudder. About 10% to coordinate that. We're gonna coordinate a little bit sharper here. Get that nose pointed down so we don't fall out of the sky like we should. Absolutely wonderful, folks. 6S5000. This one's a 100 C pack. It's kind of aggressive for this battery. You don't, or for this plane, you don't need it. Again, hold still and push it again. Mm -hmm. shit. But I'm just doing it because it was the fastest one. I was pumping in 20 amps of charge to get this thing charged. Nice little presentation pass for you there. Guys, tight quarter flying for a 1.5 meter, but absolutely does the trick, folks. That four-bladed prop cuts the air. It cuts it, cuts the cheese, man. It gets the job done. Take off flaps. Now we're gonna cut back to about 30% throttle. See if we can't gab, grab a touch and go. Full landing flaps here for this turn. Try to coordinate, uh, probably a little bit slow. Ooh, yes! 
Had to jank it there just a little bit to get it up in the air in time to get my pass as intended. So guys, we never, we never plan out our routes for flights, but I have kind of some standard routes I do. Okay, for landing flaps. So we're gonna try for a sort of pseudo landing here. We're gonna go to this low point here. As you can see, we kind of have to really thread the needle to get this type of plane in, because it's big. And I didn't like where my wheels were gonna hit, so I went ahead and bailed on that. But as you can see, that thing looks fantastic. A little upside down performance here. Nine, Timer's counting down. Six, five, I'm shoot the moon here. Janking it. <laughs> Beautiful. Did I shoot it? No, you hit it. <laughs> Good. Even better. So folks, if you haven't ever seen this thing, it's a great plane. I would definitely highly recommend it, but it is big. Keep in mind, we fly in pretty tight quarters here. If you're at a normal flight field, you're not going to have any problems getting this thing around. But, uh, you know, if you fly in tight spot like I do, you may want to go for a 1.2 size. But look how gorgeous that is with that touch and go there. It's such a pretty plane. It really is. Beautiful coordinated turns, guys. But I do want to slow it down, and I think grass ops will give us that effect. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to go into full landing flaps, cut my throttle down to about half. I'm just going to relax and not be impatient. Checking for manned aircraft. They're way up there. We should be good. Nav lights are helping, of course. But as you can see, guys, we definitely have more foliage than we have in years past. Trees get bigger with time, but there are holes, okay? So you have to learn the holes and how to stick things to get what you want out of the holes, Ooh. right? Yep. I don't like that hole. That was not as good as I wanted it to be. I thought you were gonna do the grass. Well, oh yeah, that's true, I was. I totally got sidetracked by uh, sticking things in holes. Gotta be in the right hole. Well, you know flexibility there. I'm actually going to take up some more real estate here and go up here to this hole by the Eagle Killing Zone, drop down below 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 these trees. And we are right above those tall grasses, guys, right above them. Okay, full landing flaps here. Let's see if we can get this thing. Did we land on the road last time? I feel like it. I don't remember. I think it's taking a long, long, long approach. And folks, for those of you who fly at a field with large runways, you won't have a strong appreciation for just how short this runway is until you fly a big plane. And granted, I didn't actually mean to clip into the tall grass, but we were getting a nice little rollout. It would have been beautiful. I don't think we will have sustained any damage. So we'll just verify that by doing another takeoff. It's two minutes 34 uh, past our, our five minute timer. Uh, let's verify we don't have any damage. And camera crew and I are just gonna, you know, that's one thing about big planes is it's hard to hang on to this with a lanyard because it wants to do this. Mm -hmm. And I'm always nervous I'm gonna hit the throttle cut and cause some dangerous conditions. So I like gotcha. to take that off. Okay, so yeah, we're fine. No damage. A little bit in the wheels. Some grass. Lots of grass seed. Yeah, just went into the side of the wheel there. Yep. So we should be good to go. So I might actually try grass ops here because we couldn't have done grass ops before. No. I just don't think we would have been in a position seasonally to try it. Mm -mm. But just coming from Joe Nall, guys, I got to tell you, our grass sucks. Yeah. It's beautiful when it's cut like this, but it sucks compared to Knoll. I mean, that stuff is great. We it's Bermuda. Okay, here we go. Should have Pat come visit our yard. So you guys could hear that, just the beating around. 50% throttle, look at that. Absolutely fantastic look. Okay, getting into it, right over the tree line. Let's try a, let's try a different approach here because it's so calm we can get away with a couple different angles. Oh, so guys, if you ever hear me talking about thrust reverse, it's not because we always need it. It just really does help quite a little bit. When you got a real small runway, it's really nice to be able to slow down 
and stay on the runway. Let's see if we can take off again. Okay, camera crew, you're good. Okay. Full up elevator, by the way. Woohoo, that was close. You don't wanna bounce off the edge of your runway like that because that transition onto the concrete, there's always just a little teeny bit of lip. Okay, full landing flaps and not the type of lip that the camera crew gives me while we're filming. Different type of lip. No such thing. Okay, you good? Mm -hmm. Okay, we're gonna try putting it down where we tried the first time, except I'm gonna actually do it right this time. There we go. Oh yeah, guys, we're golden. Yeah. There it is. And no problems there. So obviously the grass ops actually helps a little bit with this plane out of the flaps. But you can hear that. Ooh, you can hear that kind of nasty tick, 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 tick. That is definitely the spring-loaded struts bottoming out. So, you know, if you have a rough strip, this thing will do it. Let's check, let's see if we broke anything. Because really, what tells me if landing gear are set right is if you can handle not perfect grass ops. Now, I gotta admit, if it gets a whole lot worse than this, you can't fly much off of it. Unless you've got tundra tires, of course, on like a carbon Z cub or bigger. Um, but in this case, this is probably right in the sweet spot where it should be able to handle it. Let's go ahead and take a close look. FMS has done a great job on their landing gear, but we don't bring a bunch of BS. We show you the way it is, okay? You can see the marks, the grease marks mm -hmm. right there. Yep. Likewise here, everything looks good. Yeah, see yep. that? So we're actually good there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put this down and see if we can get just a little bit more flight time because technically we have telemetry on this. So even though our timer is still at six minutes past our five, <laughs> um, let's actually just, we'll just look. What do we have? Yeah, we're probably, we're probably pretty close, pretty close. All right, so, so we're still gonna go, close. we're gonna go anyway. Just because that's what we do here on Brian Phillips RC. We put our planes to the test so you don't have to. We try to help prevent one and dones, And then obviously we try to help get people into the hobby because at the end of the day, there's not gonna be any reason for an event like Null, like Joe Null, if everybody is just watching on TV. I mean, don't get me wrong, the professional pilots are amazing, but everybody wants to be doing that. I need to bump, bump, bump a bug. Mm -hmm. So folks, if you haven't already seen our Null video, you might wanna check it out. It's a fun thing. We just got back. These second thoughts sometimes sit for a while before they get published. But man, oh man, I'm feeling this plane so much more than last time. It's probably about 70 degrees warmer than last time too. Oh, is that, is that true? <laughs> Maybe. There we go, guys. How oh, nice. So just to prove, oh yeah! Okay, so throttle cuts on. I could go longer, but I think 722 on top of five gives us 12 minutes of flight time minus about a minute of talk time. So let's call it 10 to 11 minutes of flight time on a 5000 6S. In this case, 100C really held up to the pressure exerted by this big powerful motor and prop combo. But I gotta say, FMS, good job on this plane. It's gorgeous, it flies good, it handles good so much better than when it's like really cold and windy and crappy. Yeah. But I gotta say, biggest complaint on this plane is because we fly in a tight area, I want that thrust reverse. And you know what? They have it on some of their models and we have been showing it every time we see that yellow cable, mm -hmm. which is an individual cable in the Predator ESCs. So we'll show it if it exists. If it doesn't exist, then you'd have to go to into like an Avian ESC or something similar. You could get a Predator with thrust reverse and you could do the same thing. But this is a big ESC, it's gonna be a pricey one. So that being said, also another thing that's kind of come to mind since we came back from Null is that when I say pricey, I am like, one of these humans that like works for a living <laughs> and lives in a house that has to be paid for. Like we don't own this house, the bank owns it, just like most of you guys watching. And they don't, we don't own the land, the bank owns it. So at the end of the day, it's like, you know, we have to like give them a little bit of money for like the next 30 years. And uh, I have to pay to feed my kids and I have to pay to put gas in the truck and car and things like this. And um, you know, so I don't know what these guys at Null are doing. 
but I don't know if they're going hungry or if they just like live in a van down by the river, which would be awesome because if you lived in the van down by the river at Knoll, you'd be a happy guy. That would be awesome. But all I'm gonna say is, I don't know what they're doing for a living. If they're just like all independently wealthy or if they're all sponsored or what the deal is. I mean, you guys already see that with us. I mean, even reviewing these planes, you still end up spending a lot of money on stuff. So I want to be like them when I grow up. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> Because then maybe this 80 amp BSC, you know, you start looking at these power box systems and you start looking at these composite airframes. You start looking at these big, you know, 160 some odd inch planes and you're thinking, whoa, you know, family car budget for planes. Yeah. All of a sudden these things seem like a bargain. A great deal. <laughs> so it's really awesome. But at the same time, I would be heartbroken if I crash that thing. So we're just like you. <laughs> <laughs> and most of you are not going out and spending five or six thousand dollars on an airplane uh but someday i hope to do that for you here on this channel what? well the other thing i was thinking about just being at null is people that are getting into the hobby yeah i'm not even going to start with this plane like where does no. this fit in the spectrum of skills yeah yeah this this plane this would probably be a second or third plane honestly if you wanted um, it doesn't have to be a second or third plane. And I think for most people, I wouldn't suggest a 1.5. Mm -hmm. I'd go to like the 1.2 and yep. get something that's a little bit smaller, a little bit more economical. It's cheaper on the battery front, cheaper on the charger front. I mean, granted, if you're doing what I suggest, you're going to have a 6S charger right off the bat anyway. And you're going to have an NX10, which by the way, NX10, sometimes I'm like, you know, that's a nice transmitter really, but it's nothing compared to like a DXE you know, or a DXS or, you know, like one of these that comes in the ready to flies. So, I mean, I have to remind myself, you know, back when I was just starting, it didn't take me but a couple of months and I had a DX18, yeah. you know, and this is back when we weren't working with these guys, we weren't sending them for free or anything like that. That's back when I was paying cash I money for, for it. That. And by the way, I love my DX18. It is one of my favorite transmitters, still is to this day. However, the firmware is way slower than the NX. Yeah. And support will eventually drop off because the processor is not going to keep up. So if you guys don't already know that, that's part of the reason why I suggest you go into the NX lineup. Um, now we don't have dates, Horizon hasn't said anything, Spectrum hasn't even said anything. But at the end of the day, we try to help you guys make the best of your budget because we're like you, we work for a living. We, we don't you know like sell off companies and buy 400 acre facilities and invite everybody to come over and drink on our property, which would be fun. <laughs> but uh, I would also have a panic attack every time I saw somebody drive off the road. Yes. So anyway, special thanks to people that are you know just in a different state of mind that can do amazing things like that for our hobby. And so we really appreciate you guys, especially you, Pat, for putting that thing together and just really, I mean, you fought hard. You had some people really take some knocks at you, um, you know, over the years, especially when they kicked you off that first property and had you move. And now here it is, you're gonna be, you know, 10 miles away from another BMW plant, which, which is a great problem to have when you go to sell the property, but it's a terrible problem to have when you've got like, you know, jet engines and props Thousands running endlessly <laughs> for three or four days in a row straight or excuse me ten. sorry 10 days straight so let's just hope and pray that the neighbors love rc as much as we do yes because if they don't you know what they can do they can go pound sand that's all <laughs> i got to say we were there first Anyway, well guys, that's all I got for you. This plane is awesome. I think you're gonna like it. I wouldn't start with it as your first plane. That would be crazy. No. If you start with this plane and you have good luck, you are a very good pilot and congratulations. May you reach high levels quickly, okay? If you're a six year old and you're a better pilot than me, you make me disgusted and yet you may be. So by the way, also speaking of, and I, I say that facetiously guys, I'm just joking. Um, Kids that are learning to fly at a young age, they are good because they play video games, okay? But they're not good because they don't have a good risk reward section of the brain. So like they don't understand like, oh, dad's gotta go make 300 bucks to pay for that thing when you crash it. So if you get in a situation where you can get them into a simulator early, that's what we were hearing from everybody yeah. at Nall. All these professional pilots are all flying on simulators. They didn't have money for real planes, so they'd get the simulator. And I mean, simulator's not free, but it's free compared to this. Yeah. Um, and it's like, it's like anything else. Everything is relative. And 
when you're looking at the cost component of flying a P51 in this size class compared to the cost component of flying maybe an 800 millimeter, I'm gonna tell you this, there is a sweet spot where you get the most value with the least compromise on flight performance. And we try hard to give you guys that sweet spot or help direct you to it. And that's why we keep beating that 1.2 meter. It's a great size class. You can get them in the car. You can, you can transport them easy. They're cheap to battery up. You know, you're talking maybe a 4S. Should be able to do those. And then if you got a 6S charger, you can do your jets and stuff as you advance through the ranks as well. But at the end of the day, it's a great starting point. This 1.5 class, I tend to see them be a little teeny bit harder to fly. Although I must say, it's not so much that they're harder to fly. They actually fly about exactly the same with reflex or safe. Uh, excuse me, AS or X and safe. And in this case, we have a reflex outfit in this. Um, so we just have like a telemetry equipped receiver without AS or X and safe. By the way, if you're curious what we have exactly in this, check out our unbox build radio setup just because this is a second thoughts. It doesn't mean you can't go back and watch the exact video where we set it up. Mm -hmm. The only difference is I believe you're using an NX8. Makes no difference in this application, okay? Um, because I, I did have to rebind this, just full disclosure, not that it makes a difference. Yep. Because we matter. started it with an eight. Yeah. So, you know, in closing, I think this is a great plane. Um, would I do it as a beginner? No, probably not a tail dragger. There's just a lot of... This one actually tames the P factor because it's so heavy. Um, even better than maybe like the 1.2 meter. Uh, what's the newest one? The Kripes Almighty? Mm -hmm. the yeah, that one's got a lot of P factor. And so with like the F4U Corsair, that's the most latest and greatest from, from E-Flight and same thing on the FMS side. So really what you're looking at is you're looking at, you know, can I fit the 1.5 into my budget? Can I fit the 1.5 into my car? Mm -hmm. Versus do I want to go with the 1.2, have a little bit lighter experience, a little easier, lower consequence? Or do I want to go with something that's a little cheaper, that's actually going to fly worse in the 800 or 1100 millimeter size. And that's weird. You go from 1100 to 1200, and you'll be surprised how much better the flight performance can be. But then you go from 1200 to 1500, and you do see a little bit more challenging flight because they get a little bit more heavy, a little higher wing loading, which is weird. You think it'd be about the same, but they put more details in these things. Mm -hmm. They got more power. And also this is more doggy than a 1.2. Does it land faster since it's heavier? Uh, it, it, it depends. It depends. If it's heavier, you can sometimes keep it from pivoting on its wheels a little bit easier. Um, mm -hmm. So like for grass ops, if you got a rough field like what we got, then you're actually, you might be kind of a wash on the takeoff, but the landings, if you can get it slowed down in time, you're fine. And that's what we found here. But again, it's just so dang rough. I need to top dress this. I need to get a, a load of dirt in here and just get it top dressed early in the season, get some grass seed and get it done. Um, but I just don't have, you know, like 1800 bucks for three truckloads of dirt sitting around. Although we did just spend some money going to Null. Maybe we should have done that. No, nah, we dirt. made the right call. Yeah, Cause going to Null was so. awesome. So anyway, guys, if you want more details, leave them in the comments below. You can ask questions. Also, if you want to get to us and have a little bit quicker direct line to me, um, Patreon is an easy way to do it. Now, we don't list that as a defined benefit because we don't want you to have to add uh, VAT for that, value add. Um, value uh, added tax. Is it value added tax? Yes. Yeah, value added tax, which should be overseas. Mm -hmm. um, so if we don't define the benefit, then, you know, like just because it exists, we don't really talk about it, okay? Because we don't make any promises, okay? Right. Uh, but that is one good way to get a hold of us. Uh, comments are getting harder for us to keep up with. We still try to do a little bit diligently on these uh, videos when we put them out. Usually when they're kind of fresh, we'll go in and hit them uh, hard and kind of keep up a little bit for a day or two and kind of catch the top comments. Uh, but if you're not getting through to us there, Patreon is a good way to do that. And also we have uh, PayPal if you want to support us financially, but you don't like the monthly aspect of PayPal. Also we have... Um, you know, obviously smash a like button. We have super thanks right here on YouTube. But I would suggest, and I have always stuck to this, guys, we were so reluctant to add Patreon because we thought, man, it just feels like we're begging for money. And I hate begging for money because you guys know we're working our tails off and you're supporting us. So like that relationship is already there. Now it's just a matter of kind of formalizing it. If you want to support us, the best thing you can do is you'll be supporting us the manufacturers we work with, hobby shops, 
you know, whatever it is, distributors, and in, in, in this case, this would be directly with the manufacturer, then when you buy from the links, you support that little ecosystem, okay? Everybody wins, you win, you get the advanced information you'd like, you get the, you know, tips and tricks and also the no BS, you know, we don't come in here and just hit marketing points. That's a bunch of BS. There's so many people that do that already. We're just here to show you, does it really do what it says? And then what does it look like in my hands? Because you guys have gotten used to how good or bad I am as a pilot and also environment. So, but at the end of the day, that's the best way. Just buy these planes, buy the radios, buy the batteries, buy the accessories and things like that. And then you don't have to just like write a check to us. That's dumb. Let them write the check to us. And it just, it's easier. They compile it. It's, you know, from a business perspective for us, it's really nice because then it's just like one source instead of having like really nice people send us Starbucks gift cards. And then we have to go out and drink those delicious drinks. That was so terrible. It was terrible. Jeez. But guys, don't do that. Just <laughs> buy awesome planes, get flying and you're supporting us just in, in you know, by virtue of doing it. So if it's not this plane, that's cool. We get it. There's always going to be times when you see a video and you're like, you know, but, but really it kind of makes me think I want this one instead. And you're just sitting here using this as a tool like we designed it to be. Now you can compare those two videos. And by the way, when you watch them, you're helping us too. So really at the end of the day, you're helping us just being here right now. But if you want to help us financially, there's like four or five different ways. Okay. And we just went over those. I don't want to beat a dead horse. We always go over it in just about every video. Yes, we do get credit when you buy from the links, generally speaking. Um, and if you have immediate questions or concerns, you're like, hey, you know, something went weird when I bought this. I want to make sure you get credit. Just hit us up. There's an about tab. It's got an email. You can hit us up. But you don't need to do that on a routine basis, guys. We trust these people or we, we, we wouldn't be working with them. We have trusted people that have screwed us in the past and we have cut them off. Okay. And there's people that do that in this world. And, you know, we don't want to bring them to you. We want to get rid of them as fast as we can. And so we're looking out for you guys in that regard. Also, if they come to us and they're sleaze balls and we're like, I don't know if I trust these guys, well, we're going to, we're not going to bring them to you. Okay. Not until we vetted it somehow. We usually do a test. And the time we got ripped off, the guy was just basically a con artist. So Hopefully he didn't get any of you guys. But all I'm going to say is we're out here looking out for you. We're looking out for you from the manufacturers, from the distributors and the hobby shops that we work with to make sure you're getting a good value and you're getting the right thing. Also, this P50, it's P47, I should say. I keep interchanging the P51 for some reason on this plane, but I love it. It's a great plane. It's one of my first P47s that I've owned, but my buddy Esteban had the 1.2. And I loved it. And I think that 1.2 is actually kind of a big 1.2. It was almost like a 1.3. Uh, but that plane was an E-Flight version. Very good. Still made by, F Still made by FMS under the E-Flight brand. Um, but amazing plane. And we have some videos of flying that in some crazy high wind conditions, doing some takeoffs and landings and all sorts of stuff. You can go back and watch those old videos if you're curious to see how I progress as a pilot how we have, you know, improved our circumstances over the time that we've been doing the channel. And um, you, it might even lead to some different questions and stuff you guys have. So hopefully we have answered many of them already, but if not, comments are down below or Patreon if you wanna try to get a little bit more direct ear with me. Also, the bugs are eating us like crazy. It's super annoying. And so kudos to the camera crew for always being such a trooper in that regard. It is hard to do this. She does an amazing job and I keep hearing it from you guys and I want to keep hearing it from you. Yes, I want you to thank her. Yes, I want you to give her support because she is the one that's not in love with the hobby. She just cares about me and so she wants to see us have success doing this. So the filming was a thing we didn't know was gonna happen and she got to being very good at it and it just turned into a thing. So it's, it's really worked out well, admittedly, and... <laughs> You know, we didn't expect it. So it's really cool how that worked out. Should have been bad at it. Yeah, if she was terrible at it, then it would be really <laughs> hard. And honestly, there's ago. other influencers that have trouble with this. And, you know, they put together some good content and they're really hardworking, good people. And I like them, but they just don't have access to such an awesome camera crew. And that's not to slight anybody that's helping the other influencers. Um, but so we're just it's fortunate. It's apparently hard to do. It is. It is. I can't do it if I film it looks like crap. So anyway, yeah, even if it was- clip from Joan all got cut out. 
Thanks. <laughs> But anyway, guys, also, I just want to shout out uh, Joel one more time. Amazing experience. Uh, there's a Null in the Fall coming up. Uh, not sponsored at all. Nobody paid us a penny to be there. Um, in fact, we probably lost revenue doing that, which is okay because it was an amazing experience. Totally worth it. Yeah. It was awesome to come out and meet some of you guys in person. Um, it, was, it was a blast. And not only that, but it was super cool and it was invigorating and it, it just helps to breathe new, fresh life into me, um, you know, because over time, there are moments when you get like, you kind of fall out of love with the hobby for a little bit and then you get back into it. And I don't want to say that's what happened here because you've seen it before and you've experienced it before, but I just want to keep fresh blood in this hobby. And so we're going to do what it takes to be that for you on Brian Phillips RC. And we hope you guys see it. And we think we know you do because you have been telling us in the comments and that's very much appreciated. And yes, I do read most of the comments anyway, even if I don't reply and interact 100% like I used to. We see them. I talk to Megan on the phone when I'm driving for work and she's reading them to me and I'm saying, oh, that's awesome. Yeah, oh, that guy's a jerk. Block him. <laughs> I'm just kidding. That only happens once in a while. But generally, if people are jerks, we just like do whatever they tell us not to and it's awesome. Yeah. So we love doing that camera crew, right? Yep. Always. So, it's all the only thing he ever calls me. And Yeah, that's right. That's all we ever do. <laughs> And it was hilarious because just one last thing in closing. The other day, we were, <laughs> we were looking on Facebook or something, and somebody had made a spoof video about Brian Phillips RC, and they were like, move camera crew or something like this. What it was, was hilarious. It, it was I hilarious. Know, was and so we were laughing. It was, it was awesome. So we love it when you guys are poking fun at us. I mean, in good taste, we love it. It's awesome. So we're not, <laughs> we're not going to get all butt hurt if you make a hilarious joke because, believe me, we laugh at ourselves all the time, especially me. Mostly you. Mostly me. I laugh at myself. If I carried around a mirror, I would never stop laughing. <laughs> so we hope you're here with us for the next one. There's so much coming on Brian Phillips RC. Thanks guys for watching.